Alright, I've been trying to do this for a couple times now. Talk about court strategies. Anytime they hit down the line, we hit across court. And then, when you're getting the rallies, what we're trying to do we're trying to hit the forehand to the backhand. And we'll talk about the zones. We want this zone here to be the forehand only zone. <clears throat> From here to here, you're defensive. And the outer court from the doubles, doubles alley is really defensive. Okay? So what we're doing is we're trying to get this part here. So off the return, what we do, we can hit the shot down the line. As the player shift over, and we get into this rally where we're hitting the ball this way. No matter where they go here, you go back here. They go here, you go back here. They go here, you go back here. If, however, they hit the ball short, we can come in and nail the shot cross court and come in, follow the ball into the court. And this is where it's really hard to teach kids how to play singles because there's so many permutations, there's so many possibilities. You know, and then we talk about drop shots. So what I like to do is we teach a pattern. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have them, we have the box here for serve. If it goes to the forehand or the backhand, the backhand will take it up here. This is our service box now. That can take it up here because that, that way we end up here in court. Forehand, I actually like the forehand initially to start here because then you're covering the court here. You're already covering the cross court. And students have a hard time with this. Like you gotta think about where the surf's gonna go. Like if I serve the ball serve wide, I cover it wide. If I serve the ball down the middle, I have to be in the middle of the court for the next shot. They don't think about the next shot. And what we're trying to do here is we're, we're trying to project three shots ahead. We're trying to project you can hit the forehand cross court, then hit the ball back here. We'll go down the line and get into our backhand cross court pattern. If they force us in this forehand cross court pattern, you can do that as long as you're forehand pair to the forehand. Okay? But I don't like forehand cross court patterns because everyone's taught to finish the forehand down the line. Okay? So then you want to go to more of a defensive pattern where you switch the court going this way. Okay? And that's why I have very simple things like if you have a down the line, hit cross court. Uh, if the ball is here, we go here. If the ball is here, we go here. The ball is here, we go here. So when you're teaching kids how to play points out, it's very difficult to uh, get them. You want to eliminate the possibilities with students. That way they do things without thinking about it. The more you think, the less successful they'll be. Good games, teach them how to do this. One of my favorite games, learned it by accident. <coughs> Challenger feeds the ball in. Only rule is the player has to have his line on this line right here. Challenger feeds the ball in and start the point. Anything goes. And it's really cool because then what's going to happen is they basically hit three shots. They hit the ball here, here, or here. Okay? If they hit the ball here, you tell them to go here. If they hit the ball here, you tell them to go here. If they hit the ball here, you tell them to go here. And then you just reinforce the patterns. If they hit the ball here, the person hits the ball down the line, they can switch. The crossword is a very easy one to show, to see. Okay? And you go through the shots, you go through the patterns, and then you reverse it, do the same thing. I didn't get to talk about this. 
We call this champs. Uh, you can have two people on this side. And just have them rotate. You can have like four or five six on this side. It's good to have at least six or more because then these people are like your audience. They become your audience and the kids like having people watching. Let's get a break period. Feed the ball <coughs> at the point. If you win, this person goes over here. If this person loses, they come over here. You tell them the lanes. You say you win, you go this way, you lose, you go this way. They might break the rules, but you want to give them directions so that they're not just crossing in front, you know, going crazy. And then at the end of the round, say 15 minutes, you say you, you only win points on. You can have it two ways. Whenever you win a point, you win a point. Because the champs will play more than the losers. So you can say every time you win a point, you get a point, or you can say every time you win a point on this side, you get a point. So you win a point in transition, it doesn't count. I like every time you win a point, it's a point. Now say you have another court next to it. <clears throat> At the end of the round, you tell them, you know, if you have the top two highest scores, you move up a court. Top three lowest scores, you move down a court. One person stays. And then you have all this transitioning going on. And it's really neat because when you're doing these games, the best court is here, the worst court's over here. It becomes a really good filtering process. And to make it so that, you know, like a lot of people are like, well, the good guys won't play the good guys, the bad guys won't play the bad guys. If you're in a group lesson, you want your bad kids playing your good kids. Because by having your bad kids play your good kids, they get better. So what I would do is that the first round, all the jump kids are here. And all the best kids are here. What happens is the worst kids head to the, 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 the jump court, and the best kids go up. But as they transition, they play against each other. And on this court, when you have the worst kids playing here, the best of the worst will stay here. You know, the worst of the best will stay here in the first round. You just have to have enough round so it allows the movement to go through the court. The other thing about having games like this is it really easy to create penalties. Like you say, okay, top two conditioning, two laps, uh, next two, three, last two, four laps, go. And you, you add that pressure to the, to the system, you know. And if you make it severe, you create a lot of pressure. And there will be cheating, there's going to be all these things going on in the match that happen in tournaments. And you just tell them, dude, this is a tournament. This is reality. you got to deal with this. you got to do this in the match. I'm not going to be there all the time. You need to go. You need to stand up for yourself in the match. Now, so that's that's a really good thing with this pattern. The second thing is when you're playing the game, the kids deal up their own strategies to win, and this is what you want happening. Because I used to have students that were really smart. They would do drop shots. Guys would come up the net. They would lob. They would they would know. Oh, this person's forehand is really good. This person's backhand is really good. They would tinker the strategies to deal with the different situations, and then finally. You get to the point where you're not dealing with shot execution. You're not, this is how you hit forehand. No, you're dealing with shot selection. Look, you're on the run here, Kevin, and you're hitting a down line, you're hitting a cross court roll here. That's not possible. You're on the run here, Kevin, hit the shot here. You get no chance, you know. You can talk about specific situations in the, in, in the shot sequence and really <coughs> get, get to match situations. As long as you don't add the serve to it, it's fair between boys and girls. Once you add the serve, it really favors guys because guys have better serves. So you got to think about that when you think about adding the serve to it. But you could easily add the serve, however, the serve slows this process down. And if I serve here, you know, if I miss my first serve, then you have to wait for a second serve. If I feed, you're always going to be going on, going on, going on. So this is a really good game that will help incorporate your strategies.